Hi, my name is Sean Cowgill, and I'm making this video to tell you what federal prison camp is really like. Yes, Club Fed does exist, at least in my experience, and that, I'm just going to talk about my experience, and, and uh, there are other videos out there to tell you Club Fed does not exist. I, I showed you the picture uh, of me holding a puppy in front of a building. So this is in front of what they call the teller building. It's a, it, there's two unit buildings. Uh, so I served a 52 month sentence in a federal prison camp in Florence, Colorado. Uh, out of the 52 month sentence, I did 27 months in the prison camp and five months in a halfway house. Um, and I'm on probation now I've been out since Christmas of 2019, so I've been out about 10 months, and uh, I want to tell you, it's a piece of cake. There's going to be some bad times and some hard times, but uh, it is Club Fed. It, I, I don't care what these other people say on their videos. It was Club Fed. Um, I had a lot of good times. I'm going to make some videos and talk about that, but I'm making this video to, for the guy who's out there on federal pretrial. I was on four years in federal pretrial. Four years, not knowing if I'm getting 10 years. I heard 11 to 13 years when I first got my case. Uh, it was for wire fraud. Uh, so I did uh, tax returns for a whole lot of homeless people and a lot of tweaker drug addicts. I got them off fat refunds and uh, government came after me. Uh, cause none of these people had real jobs. So I made it these false tax returns. And I put down that they were house cleaners and yard doing babysitting jobs or whatever. I said, I told people, just make up a job that pays you cash. We're going to tell the government you made cash. Don't tell me you made more than $10,000 and I'll get you a whole bunch of earned income credits. And I took a 20% out of their refund. And uh, that's another story I'll get into. So, um, but so my, my crime was wire fraud. Uh, yes, I'm guilty of it. And yes, I did it. I won't do it again. Um, but I have been in jail uh, a few times before I went to federal prison. Most of my crimes were for drug possession, little small amounts, half gram of cocaine, a uh, quarter gram of crystal meth. I'm in recovery now, so I'm coming up on four years clean and sober. Um, I got the bulk of my clean and sober time while I was in prison. Went to a lot of AA meetings. I did a drug program in there. I did a couple drug programs. There's a program called RDAP. It gives you a year off on your sentence. Another six months halfway house. I'm going to do another video about that. So out of a 52-month sentence, I only had to serve 27 months in the prison camp. Um, so I'm going to make a bunch of videos because I want to help people. I'm making this one to let you know if you're on pre-trial and you know you're going to prison um, and you did a white-collar crime, and uh, you've been told you're, you probably know that you already know you're going to go to pr prison camp or low. Um, and uh, so hit hit subscribe for me. Hit the like video because I'm trying to get a thousand subscribers. Then I can go live on YouTube and I can do questions and answers and stuff. And uh, I really want to make a lot of videos and try to help you guys to let you know that your life is not over. Your life is not over. You may have to go to prison for five years or eight years, ten years. Um, if you're a white-collar criminal like I was, you might get two years. You might get probation. All these questions are probably running through your mind. Everybody wants probation. The feds don't play. Um, if you've been indicted, there's a 99.4% chance you're, you're going to federal prison. Um, the best lawyers in the world, they couldn't help Trump's buddies. So, um... Unless you know Trump to give you a pardon, you're probably going to federal prison. But the good thing is you're going to a camp or you're going to a low. Now, I can't, I don't know you, so I'm guessing since you're watching this video and you see white collar crime, you're going to a camp. A camp is for somebody less than 10 years. Um, you can't have any other cases going like that. Um, I had been to jail a whole bunch of times, more than a half a dozen times in my life. So I had uh, what you call 11 uh, in custody points. So uh, the point system for a camp is 1 to 11 points. 
and that's your record of your past criminal history. Um, some of it has to do with age and things like that. Um, I'll get in another video on that, how you can figure out how many points you've got. Your lawyer should also know. Um, if you have 11 to 15 points, you do a, a, a low. If you do 16 to 20 points, I believe it's a medium. And in, anything past 20, you're going to a penitentiary. Now, mediums and penitentiaries, I don't know much about. I've, some guys in the camp have told me about them. They're scary places. I wouldn't have made it. I'd have been somebody's bitch. I know it. I wouldn't have made it. But if you're a guy like me with no nonviolent crimes um, and you uh, are probably going to federal prison camp. And I'm going to tell you, here's the good thing. It's like going to high school, man. It's like a high school campus or a junior college campus. Um, I got some more pictures. I'll show you guys here. I, I just want you to know. So they, they say in, in federal prison, in, in regular prisons, they have these cars and these gangs you got to join. And we don't have, there's no politics. I hear, here's some typical guys that I hung out with in there. And uh, as you can see, the race, there's the, the, the race card is not really a big deal in, in federal prison. Um, I had a couple buddies here. I'll show you another. Here's a cup. Here's a buddy of mine. So he's from South Africa. We hung out a lot. You you can mix with the races. We have our own tables when we a chow and stuff in our own TV rooms. But it's <laughs> there was white guys that hung out with black guys all the time, and nobody. They, it's not like it's not like that in federal prison in a camp. It's not like that at all. You don't have to join a gang. You're relatively safe unless you start gambling and owe people money. You might get beat up, but don't get into that. And I'll do another video on that. You won't believe how much gambling goes on in a prison camp. So a camp has no fences. You can walk away anytime you want. Go ahead. Uh, and it's only a two-year added to your sentence if you get caught. Some guys think it's worth it. Um, so go ahead and walk. Our warden said, hey, I'll call you a cab, man. <laughs> but we'll come, we'll come get you like the next day. Um, nobody took them up on it. So let me tell you about my first day in federal prison. So I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area, and uh, I had a, I got sentenced on March 2nd of 2017. They gave me 60 days to turn myself in. Uh, so that was May 2nd. I had to turn myself in by noon. Um, so I didn't even know if I was going to a camp or a medium. My lawyer didn't know. The, the designation card I got in the mail said to re report to FCI Florence at, at 12 noon on uh, May 2nd. I called the prison and I said, am I going to a camp? Because when I look on the website, FCI is a medium. The lady on the phone said, oh, we can't tell you that till you get here. My experience is I've never heard of anybody self-surrendering to a medium. Maybe to a low, but not to a medium. And we had no low. Where I was in Florence, we had a camp, we had a medium, we had a penitentiary, and we had the ADX Supermax. And I had a job at the Supermax. Uh, a lot of campers get jobs. So an uh, inmate drives you over in a van, and we went and fed the Unabomber and the Boston Bomber and the Oklahoma City Bomber. And I went to a culinary school there, and it was it was a great job. Um, tell you that in another video. Let me tell you about my first day. So I had a friend who lives in Colorado Springs. Uh, maybe it's an hour drive from, from the prison. So I stayed with him a couple days before I had to turn myself in. And the morning that I had to turn myself in, a friend of mine, Walt Pavlo, he's a, one of those prison consultant guys. I never hired him because I didn't have any money. Um, Walt gave me a lot of help and a lot of advice. Um, he also put $100 on my books every month that I was in prison because I didn't have money going in. Um, so that's why I'm not trying to... Uh, charge anybody for any help but I do want to leave my phone number at the end of this video if you want to call me you want some help and somebody to talk to let you know it's going to be all right I, I want to be able to help you um, so real quick I want to just make finish up this video and then get into a part two and a part three so my friend drops me off at there's there's uh we didn't get to drive into the prison there's a little guard tower not a guard tower a guard gate you know with the thing that goes up and a guard booth right on the side of the road so we pull up and uh, i say i'm here to turn myself in i got self-surrender i got there about 10 30 in the morning 
I didn't have to be there till 12. But Walt told me, if you go in early, they'll process you quicker and uh, you can get in there because sometimes if you show up too late, they're going to put you in the hole for a couple of days. So I didn't want to do anything like that. So and he goes, besides, when you get out, you're going to leave at six in the morning. I know that's a couple of years away, but so I, I took his advice. I showed up at 1030 in the morning. So they told me just to wait next to the side of the road. Um, they didn't handcuff me or nothing like that. I said my goodbyes to my friend and his wife and hugs and all that stuff. And they drove off. And I'm standing there and uh, I'm waiting about 10 minutes. And here comes a little white Toyota pickup truck with a lady driving it. And she's not in a uniform or anything. She had some kind of polo shirt. It said, you know, some government little logo thing on it. But it was casual dress. And she pulls up and she goes, are you Sean? And I go, yeah. She goes, get in. I go, get in. She goes, yeah, get in. I'm going to take you, I'm gonna take your hair, check you in. So I get in the truck and I go, should I put my seatbelt? Don't worry about your seatbelt. We're just going right up here. So she drives up and I look at her and I go, she goes, what's the matter? I go, well, you're awful nice to me. She goes, yeah, welcome to camp. I go, oh, I'm going to the camp. She goes, yeah, what do you think you're going to? I go, well, they didn't tell me. She goes, they didn't tell you. You're going to a camp. Nobody goes to the medium. It checks in like that. So, so we pull up in this parking lot. And we walk over and she goes, let me uh, get my keys out. And she opens up her office door. And she goes, just have a seat on the bench here. And somebody's going to bring you some paperwork. And we're going to get you changed out. And everything's it's all right. She goes, she goes, welcome to Florence. So I'm tripping. And here comes the inmate. And he's got a clipboard with some paperwork. And he goes, hey, how you doing? My name's, uh, I forget what his name was. And he, he shakes my hand and he He's a black guy, and he reaches and shake my hand, and he goes, yeah, man, you can shake my hand here. This is a camp. So right now, he, he knew. He knew that I, I, the black, white thing. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And he goes, man, you got to fill all of this paperwork. And he goes, are you hungry? And I go, no. Nah. He goes, let me get you a lunch. So he comes back with a bag of lunch. It's not a bologna sandwich. It's cold guts. You know, like you get at Subway. It's got the three kinds of meat, like the cotto salami and turkey and uh, some, and maybe a little bologna with a slice of cheese, some white bread, a uh, little mustard mayonnaise packets, a pack of potato chips, an apple, celery stick, and a carrot, and a milk. And he goes, and that's our typical lunch here. I go, really? No bologna sandwiches? They had them the next year, but for that year, there was no bologna sandwiches, and I ate lunch. It wasn't bad. And then uh, uh, one of the CEOs comes and he goes, hey, come with me in this room. I'm going to change you out to your, get rid of your street clothes. So we go in this room and he's a young guy and he's got he's got a crew cut. And he's kind of looks like cops I see in jail. And this guy kind of intimidated me a little. And he goes, he goes, what are you nervous? And I go, well, it's my first time in prison. He goes, man, don't don't worry, man. You're, this is a camp, man. Don't sweat it. He goes, I need you to take off all your clothes. He goes, do you know the drill? You got to lean over and cough and spread your cheeks. And I go, yeah. So I take off my clothes and stuff. And he goes, those shoes you got there. He goes, uh, he goes, um, you can you can bring those in the camp. He goes, there's they're not, not they were just some cheap like uh, Payless shoe source type shoes. I, there was no brand name on it. He goes, yeah, you can bring those in there. And he grabs them and he just kind of coon coon like that and he gives them to me. I could have had drugs stuff. I could have had anything in there. I, I didn't know you could keep your shoes. I had a piece of paper with all my friends and families with their address and their names and everything on it because I didn't know whether, uh, you know, uh, if I could, I couldn't, you know, if I could remember. The, anyways, I brought that in there. But I had also mailed myself a letter two days before with my friends and family's information on a piece of paper because you can't bring much in there. Um you, you can't bring, really, you, you can bring that piece of paper, and that's about it. Um, you can bring a wedding ring if it's under $100. You can bring eyeglasses, but they can't be really expensive glasses. And I guess you can bring your shoes. <laughs> they got to be cheap shoes. Um, so they changed me out into these uh, gray sweatpant things and a gray T-shirt. And, uh, and I had my own shoes on. And uh, then I had to see a psychiatrist. Make sure you're not crazy. You're not going to hurt anybody. You're not going to hurt yourself. Then you see a doctor. You have a quick physical. And then everything's good to go. And they said, okay, so now we're going to um, give you a little tour of uh, this building here. And we're going to get you get you going. So they gave me a little tour of this little metal. It's a medical facility. I looked. There's dental chairs in there. There's a couple of medical offices. With, you know, uh, looks like a little mini hospital. 
And it's then we go down this hall, and there's like these administration offices, people in there typing on their computers. Then we get to this big room, and it's um, another set of doors with uh, with what this later to be called the bubble, this glass with these two officers behind it. And then he shows me this one room that's got a big day room inside of it. He goes, "That's the RDAP class in there." Right now they're uh, they're playing games. I look in there, and these guys are juggling. Or they got the the Jenga things with the. Uh, and there was another game, Mouse Trap. Remember the ball that goes down? I looked in there, and they were playing all these different games. I come to find out, RDAP plays a game an hour a day. They play different kinds of things. I'll, that's another video I'll do about RDAP. RDAP was a lot of fun, and you get a year off. And I'll tell you how to get that. But you had to be a drug addict or an alcoholic to get into RDAP. And you had, but you had, you had to be that before you got busted, not after. But um, anyways, I'll tell you about how to get in that. Um, so uh, so so now he tells me now you got to take. Uh, oh, he didn't give me the blanket, the pillow. Uh, took me over to the laundry room. That's where they gave me blanket, pillow. They changed me out again until you're green. Apparently, I got there early enough for they changed me out of my greens. Those gray sweatpants is what they give the newbies, and that's how everybody knows you're new. I got there so early, they gave me the regular clothes. And so now I got my arm full with my blanket and my towel, and, you know, they give me some toothpaste and soap and stuff like that. And and they point me down the yard. There's, so there's two different buildings in RDAP, and they look like this. In the back here, so this is Teller Building, um, and, and, and so um, we got Pikes Peak Mountain in the background. This is uh, in, in Colorado, Southern Colorado. It's like it was a beautiful, beautiful place to do your prison time. Um, so the reason I have the puppy is because they have a dog program in there. Uh, a lot of people uh, train dogs, these service dogs, and that's another program. Uh, I, don't, I think they get some time off their sentence too. But um, so they train dogs every six months. They get a new dog, and uh, that's another video I'll, I'll make. So I had to walk down this long path to get to that building, and uh, I'll never forget. I got everything in my hands, right? And uh, and I got a laundry bag with some more clothes in it, extra clothes they give you. And these two guys came up to me, and they said, "Hey." You new here? I go, yeah. They go, where, where are you looking for? I go, well, I got. I'm supposed to talk to the unit manager, uh, in two oh two two ten or whatever. They go, well, here, I'll help you with your stuff. Why don't you let me let me help you with your stuff? And I remember going, no, 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 don't let anybody help you because I don't want to be somebody's bitch. If I let this guy carry my stuff, he's I'm gonna owe him. That wasn't the case. I didn't know it at the time. But I go, no, no, man, I got this. I got this, man. I don't need your help. I mean, I was trying to be hard. I didn't know. I didn't know everybody's in there is nice guys, man. Boy, I'm gonna have to make a part two of this video because now I can laugh at it. But man, I had nothing to be afraid of. Damn, shit. So <clears throat> I make my way to the building, and the unit manager's office, or no, the counselor's office is upstairs. So I I find my way up to her door. And it's a lady, and I remember her. She goes, yeah, come on and sit down. And she goes, okay, I'm going to assign you to bed 110. She says, uh, there's nobody in there right now, but you will have another. You'll, you'll, have, a, you'll, have, another, you'll have a celly soon. And she says, uh, any questions? And you know, I, I didn't remember if I had a couple questions or not. Um, I know she gave me my my username and password so I can get on email and I could also make phone calls and she wrote it all down on a piece of paper and said here and she said you got $150 on your books I go I do Walt Pablo thank you Walt had $150 waiting for me on my books and he also put $100 on my books every month check out his videos if you can another guy RDAP Dan he's a good guy too and he sent me some money too and that's another video uh, and I never hired these guys. I didn't have no money to hire a person consultant. Um, the government took everything I had, and I, I was never a rich guy to begin with. So here I am off to find my, 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 my new cell. And uh, so I come out, and there's a couple different TV rooms. Uh, I found the door, like it was unit range seven, bed one ten. 
So uh, I find range 7. I see bed 10. There's nobody in it, like she said. So in a prison camp, it's cubicles. Um, when you go to a medium or a penitentiary, I think they get their own cell. They don't get their own cell, but it's cells, two-man cells. If you get to a low, I understand that's, that's big dorms, like homeless shelter-type dorms. In a camp, it's cubicles, like office cubicles. Uh, I, I, they're made of brick. You know, they have these brick dividers. Um, if you ever seen uh, Orange is the New Black, that's pretty much what it is. Two beds to a cubicle with a big old locker and a window. And I uh, had a window overlooking uh, Colorado and Pikes Peak every morning. I woke up to see Pikes Peak. Um, so I put everything on the bed. I made my bed. I got everything settled in. A couple guys came over, introduced themselves from next door. This guy named Dave. I may not say his name. <laughs> he knows. Call him Dave. I, I don't know if he watches this video. We are kind of friends. We were in the beginning more. Um, he came over and started giving me the rundown on the prison. And uh, it's probably 2 o'clock in the afternoon right now. So, uh, I, I, and I'm looking around and people are coming up to me saying, hi, do I, do, do I need anything? And I'm starting to line up, but I'm still not trusting. There's a catch. These people are being nice for a reason. That's just how it is. They help everybody out. Um, so I'm going to stop this video right now. This is part one. I'm going to do a part two. So it's two o'clock, my first day in prison. And uh, I'll do a part two in a minute. And uh, I hope this is going to help you guys. you got nothing to worry about if you're going to a camp. I'm telling you, you're going to have fun. You're going to cry sometimes, and you're going to miss your home, and it's, you know, it is prison. There's times they remind you that you have shakedowns and lockdowns and all that, and I saw a couple fights, but they were high school fights, you know, on the yard. Anyways, you're going to make it through camp. Camp is, I mean, you could go out all day long, 6 in the morning to 10 o'clock at night, in and out, do whatever you want. There's jobs you got to do. There's even ways to not get a job. The camp I was at, I think only half the inmates had a job. Um, and if you got money on your books, um, you know, you got nothing to worry about. You can you can get anything you want in a camp, and I'll do another video on that. Um, but yeah, anyways, I'm going to stop this video right now. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, check out part two. Thank you.